rest of the jewelry out there, not only were they extremely primitive, but they had absolutely no contact with the outside world. So they had never other communications. They didn't hear of the great sages of different places. They didn't have anything. They didn't know anything. They didn't have any ways of communicating. They did not get any Torahs from outside. The last time that a Torah came to Yemen from the outside was approximately a thousand years before. So all their scrolls were being copied and recopied from their original Torah, which was not the same that we had in Egypt and Yemen. 1949, Israel sends out the planes. They say, come on, there was a little window of opportunity. Get on the planes, we're going to save you. The Jews responded and said there, we know, we believe that when Mashiach, the time comes, we're going to all come back to Israel. It says, we're going to be coming back to Israel on the wings of an eagle. These things, we don't know what they are, but they don't look like eagles. And they refused to get on the plane. They were being persecuted, but they weren't going. Israel took the planes, flew them back, and they painted the planes to look like eagles. This is a true story. You can look it up, you have them in your library. They fly the planes back, they take out all the seats because they were, again, primitive, they only sat on the floor and everything. They take the little bit of stuff that they can, amongst their little stuff was Torahs. They bring these Torahs in, opportunity knocks. Now's a chance to do a comparison between a, a group of scrolls that have never been contaminated, if you will, by the rest of the world. They brought in scribes and rabbis and philosophers and archaeologists, they put the whole team in there. And for weeks and weeks, they examined all these scrolls and cross-referenced them. Every chapter, every paragraph, every word, every letter, it's identical. Amisrael Chai. There you go.